Hello Electra Heads, Ailish here, and today we are talking about charging. No, not that kind of charging, electric vehicle charging, obviously, because there is good news. In fact, we have tons of good news, all EV related, so make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of it. Sales of electric vehicles in the UK are booming. In 2021, 190,727 of new cars purchased and registered in the UK were battery electric vehicles, which is 11.6% of all new car sales. It may not sound like much, but the fact is more BEVs were sold in the UK in 2021 alone than were sold in the previous five years years combined. That's a whole lot of electricity out there on the roads and it really does go to show that the market is starting to shift away from internal combustion and towards greener tech at an increasingly speedy rate. Which as I said, it's good news, right? Well, yeah, of course it is. Here on the channel, we all know that EVs are the future and increasingly the present. So with these new sales figures, we can all just skip off merrily into the land of sustainable milk and renewable electric honey. Except there could be a problem. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay Go! While more EVs being sold equals good, that's only half the story. Because every EV out there in the wild needs somewhere to charge up. And at the moment, there just aren't enough charge points. According to the most recent government statistics, there are currently just under 25,000 charging points in the UK. And that's a long way off the more than 66,000 petrol pumps available to British motorists. And while more are being built, it's just not happening fast enough. The Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders, or SMMT, says that between 2019 and 2021, the sales of pure EVs rose by a staggering 586.8%. But in the same period, the number of standard charging points in the UK increased by just 69.8%, and the number of rapid charging points went up by only 82.3%. Now, maths is not my strong suit. Well, I did get a B in GCSEs, but anyway, even I can see that those numbers don't match up. Not by a long way. And it's not just the numbers that are a problem. Distribution is too. The postcode lottery doesn't just affect what healthcare is available and how good the schools are where you live. There is also a serious disparity in charging infrastructure across the country. The SMMT reckons there is one charger for every 26 EVs in the south of England, but just one for every 37 electric cars in the north. In fact, research from the County Council's network shows that there are more public charging points in London alone than in all of England's counties combined. The conclusion is obvious. If you live in a big city, especially somewhere like London, you've at least got a chance of finding an electric juice pump. But if you're not in a big urban area, you might be driving a long, long way to find somewhere to charge up. And that's hardly going to tip the balance towards an EV if you're considering a new car purchase in the near future, especially if it's not feasible, practical, or affordable to install your own charging point at home. And the problem is only set to get worse. Remember those impressive EV sales stats I mentioned earlier? Well, those numbers are predicted to be the tip of the electric iceberg. Iceberg, right ahead! EV sales are predicted to rise by 74% in the UK in 2022, and to tip over 50% of all new car sales by 2025. And of course, by 2030, sales of new petrol and diesel cars will be banned. So where are all these new cars gonna charge up? Well, as a politician might say, I'm glad you asked me that question. Just to, to thank you for giving me an opportunity really to re repeat uh, a point that I, I made earlier on. Because the government has recognized this is a problem. And in March, they set out exactly what they plan to do about it. We all know the first step towards growth is admitting you have a problem. Which, to be fair, the government has done, saying in a recent report that the current rate of charge point deployment is not at a pace consistent with what is needed for a wholly zero emission new car fleet in 2035. Round of applause for that then. Was that sarcasm? So what is their plan? Well, my colleague Tim explained all in this article. The key points are the two headline grabbing numbers at the very top of the new strategy, namely that the government has committed to a whopping 1.6 billion to expand the UK's charging network with a target of 300,000 public charge points in place by 2030. 
Remember, there are currently around 66,000 spaces at petrol pumps across the UK, so <laughs> this is a major upgrade. As part of the planned expansion, the government's rapid charging fund of 950 million will support the rollout of at least 6,000 high-powered superfast charge points across England's motorways by 2035. Meanwhile, the private sector has also RSVP'd to the party. CoCharger, for example, is an app that aims to connect people with EV home chargers with those who need them but can't install their own. They estimate that there are around 400,000 home EV charging points across the UK, but reckon 40 to 45% of motorists are unable to install a charger at their own home, either because you live in a flat or your area doesn't have adequate infrastructure if you live somewhere a touch more rural. So if you do have a charger, that app allows you to effectively rent yours out, and that opens up a whole new network of chargers to those in need. Think of it as Airbnb for charging points. So that's the picture in the UK, but how are things looking elsewhere? Well, according to the European Automobile Manufacturers Association, the Netherlands leads the way for charging points in Europe. In terms of the numbers, at least, with 66,000 public chargers, while France and Germany are next up with around 45,000 each. Now, drop me a comment down below if you're watching from the Netherlands, France, or Germany. I'd love to hear your EV charging experiences. Norway, meanwhile, is the self-proclaimed EV capital of the world and in 2020, a whopping 54% of new cars sold were pure EV, and that figure rises to 74% if you include PEVs. No other country in the world has more electric vehicles per capita, and they're on track to achieve their goal of an entirely zero emission vehicle fleet by 2025, which their government is pushing through a host of encouraging policies and tax incentives. And to service all those cars, they have some 17,000 charging stations, more than 3,300 of which are fast chargers. That equates to around one public charging point for every 25 EVs on the road. Christina Boo. Ah, stop, I could have dropped my croissant. Secretary General of the Norwegian Electric Vehicle Association also claims the whole country is well served, rather than just the big urban areas like here in the UK. Even the most northern parts of Norway, an area with huge distances, more reindeer than people, and really low temperatures in the wintertime, you can easily get around with an EV. It's all really great stuff. And the US is also well ahead of this. Well, sort of, with over 113,000 chargers for around 2.1 million EVs on the road, which is about one for every 18 cars. Although there are serious coverage issues in America with a huge proportion of those stations, well, over a third, in fact, in California alone. So the UK has some way to go to catch up with the likes of Norway, the Netherlands, and the US, but we are well ahead of Australia, for example, where there is a paltry 3,000 public chargers. Other countries in our Hall of EV charging point shame are Lithuania, Malta, and Cyprus. God, oh, those numbers. So here's the thing, yes, EV sales are on an upward curve in the UK, which is great, but that won't continue unless the infrastructure is put in place to match, with more and more manufacturers producing more and more EVs on the roads each year, and the price gradually coming down as well. The biggest barrier to someone making the switch from petrol to electric could well be infrastructure anxiety, rather than the range anxiety so often mentioned by skeptics. And after all, if you solve the former, you automatically solve the latter problem anyway. Simple. A YouGov survey carried out last year found that a quarter of adults who said they would use an electric or hybrid vehicle in the UK were worried about the availability of charging points. This issue would melt away if the government can stick to its ambitious new targets. But will they stick to them? That is the million dollar question. After all, we all know this is a government that always tells the truth and sticks to their promises. I believed implicitly that this was a work event. Research by the Royal Society for Chemistry found that two thirds of UK drivers were not confident the government will stick to its infrastructure commitments, which could have a huge impact in terms of undermining the case for switching to electric, and these people are looking for a new car. So it seems clear then, a huge proportion of motorists in the UK are ready and willing to go electric, but to do that they need the government to deliver on its bold promises on charging points. Well, UK government, it's over to you. It is not going to happen. It is more likely that, as I say, I will be reincarnated as an the olive or locked in a disused fridge or decapitated by a flying frisbee. 
And what about you lot at home? Do you fit into that want to switch category but can't quite make that commitment? Or are there any other EV related woes that you want to throw down in the comments? Let me know and let's talk about it. And if you've made it this far, make sure to hit that like button and stick with us by hitting subscribe if you haven't already for lots more electric car chat. Until next time, my fellow electroheads.